For a question like this, we have a graphing calculator built in. I do not think you need to do this algebraically. I'll show you it at the end, but I think it's a case where the new Desmos calculator really helps us out. So I've just gone ahead and put that equation uh, into the calculator. So negative 4x squared minus 7x equals negative 36. Now, it's a parabola. You probably think about that as a parabola because of the squared, but I want to be clear that it's not like if I zoom out, it's going to make a turn anywhere. It's not doing that. And the reason is that there's only one variable here. There's only x. So basically in this case, the graphing calculator is just behaving like a, an equation solver. So it's showing me the answer. I just need to know what this means is, is these are two vertical lines that give me the x value that I want. So it's giving me two x values because if we did solve this algebraically, we would get two solutions, except this time they're asking only for the positive solution. So that's going to clearly be where we have a positive number to the right of the zero. And if I touch it, the number is 2.25. Hopefully you can just know 2.25 is going to be uh, 8, uh, or I should say it's going to be 2 and a quarter, which is 9 fourths. So choice B is my answer here. Um, you can even put that in your other calculator if you want and just do 9 divided by 4 to get 2.25 and confirm. Um, but that's it. That's all you have to do. The, the, the graphing calculator is just solving this for us. So if, as long as you're careful entering it, you can get this pretty quickly. Um, maybe some of you will prefer to do the algebra. I just really don't think it makes sense here. What I would do is I'd move both of these parts over to the right side. So I'd have zero is equal to four X squared plus seven X minus 36. But that's kind of a pain in the neck. I mean, I can factor this, but I'm gonna have to deal with the fact that there's a four here. So the way I learned it is I would slide and divide. So first you slide that first term down to the other side by multiplying it. So we're multiplying 4 and 36. So I'm going to basically get a new equation, x squared plus 7x. 36 times 4 is 144. So minus 144. Minus 144. And now I would just factor this normally. This is the slide step. So I have x and x, and now 144 is just a huge number. So kind of from trial and error here, I'd be like, all right, well, I got to get two numbers that are relatively close together. So maybe like something like, I don't know, if I divide by 12, 12 and 12, so 144, 12 and 12, but that's not going to be it. So let's, let's lower one. What about 8? Eight? 8 and 18. 8 and 18, and I guess one's going one's gonna to be positive and one's negative. So 8 and 18, not quite there, right? 8 and 18 are, are 10 apart. How about 9? So 144 divided by 9 and 16, and there it is. That's a difference of 7. So it's going to be a plus 16 and a minus 7. Now, normally we would stop here and we'd be like, oh, okay, x is equal to negative 16 and x is equal to positive 7. Those are my two roots, but I have to remember I slot... When I slide at the beginning, I'm, I'm changing the equation. So I've got to slide and divide. I have to take that four back out at the end. So I have to divide both of my equations, I guess, by four, my factors, and bring it back out. And so now I have zero is equal to, this one works out nicely, x plus four. And, um, oh, I, I wrote seven, this is supposed to be nine. X minus nine fourths here. And you could bring the four over, but I'm not gonna bother because all I care about is the actual root, which is negative four and positive nine fourths. And since they wanted the positive solution, there it is. But you can see, I mean, this is maybe the best proof I could have possibly come up with for why the new calculator built in is really, really good for this kind of stuff, is I made a mistake. I, I did all my things right. I, I have nine written right here, right? But then when I wrote it over here, it somehow became a seven. I don't know. It was just on my brain, I guess. I don't know. And I would have gotten it wrong because seven fourths is also an answer. Um, so that's not great. Um, the graphing calculator does not have that problem as long as I enter it right. Just to give you one final solution, one possible other way to do it, is we could have guessed and checked from the start as well because we only have four answers. So if I were guessing and checking, I would have started with the easiest ones, four and seven, tested those out. They wouldn't have worked. Then I would have had to choose between A and B and, and test it to be sure. The reason I don't love that for this particular question is I've got fractions. And 
dealing with fractions in the calculator and squaring it, it's just, it's another potential area of like making a mistake. So I'd rather not open myself up to that error. The graphing calculator just shows it. So as long as you enter that equation right, it's just gonna solve it for you. I think that that's gonna be the way to go on a lot of SAT questions on this new digital test that you would not have been graphing for the old test. On a regular graphing calculator, I think it's a pain, but I think Desmos makes this pretty easy. So hopefully you agree. Uh, at least start trying to think about that as you go through a test.